His nerves have to be shattered. And he's got to be very smooth. Oh, good job. He was a very late starter in uh, riding bikes. He was three and a half when he started. Actually, his father was quite famous in his own right also. He was in indeed. Trials. He says he's been watching trials all his life. But he is a very slight lad. He's very little, so uh, when he gets a bit more weight and size on him, maybe uh, he'll be a stronger, more effective rider. But, but he's, wait, he's doing pretty well. He has all the style, and he's going to be a very good rider. Yes, yeah, very good. A minute to add to that makes 3.00.6. Gary Hall, 13 years old, from Shildon in County Durham, riding a Yamaha 250. Bit of a snooker fan. This is a much more leisurely sport than snooker. Now, we've had a lot of trouble down here, and part of the problem is from all the water coming up with the tires. And he does have a foot down, but he didn't lose any time. So, 20 seconds to add. himself sideways. <laughs> yes. A bit of a oh, what a shame. There. This is an over, under and over. Now over the top. Well, so far everyone has lost quite a bit of time down by the water. He did lose a foot. He did not lose the time. He's got 40 seconds oh, to add to this, but he's got another there. That makes a full minute. Well, it just uh, throws into perspective how good Luke Wood's ride was to do this course in 108.63 with one fairly careless penalty for him. Well, this actually is pretty fast by young Gary. He could well be in second place. Touch and go for second place. And 120.06 plus a minute. He is in second at the moment. This is 10-year-old Ricky Bromley on his Fantic 80. One of the smallest lads in the competition. He said uh, in a little interview with me before Heat 1 that he was going to enjoy himself. He wasn't too worried about the course. He was just going to enjoy it. But he's got a penalty on Zebedee already and one on the waterfall. So I hope he is going to enjoy it because it doesn't look like he's going to get into the winning frame. Well, he, he really should take a foot at the bottom here. See, he has his foot down. Oh, it's too late. Now, to be fair, all of these youngsters have had a practice on this course, and in practice, they didn't have many problems. The nerves that take over when the television cameras are running really is remarkable. But he's, he's in trouble here. Whoops, he's in more trouble. The bike dropped down the bank. And it is heavy, isn't it, Jack? Oh, the bike try and get something up there. I mean, you've got real problems. The bike is very heavy, and, and this he is one of the smallest competitors here. So he, he needs a marshal there. He's been riding for four years. He's won a lot of trophies in his time. He won 90 of them in three and a half years, which uh, has got to be good. But uh, I, I think he's not going to get out of there. And he's called for assistance. And he really will need it to get out of there. And I should think that even uh, the marshals are going to find it difficult to get the bike out. But in fact, they did get uh, Ricky going again. He attacked the course very bravely. He lost a huge amount of time down in that uh, waterside bit, but he rode extremely well, but ended up with a final time of five minutes, 39.35, and in fact was technically disqualified, but a very brave effort. Well, Ricky, you said uh, before heat one that you thought it was going to be a bit hairy, this course. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit hairy, and I got stuck down on the waterfall because there was a bit big stone in the way. It just knocked you offline, really, didn't it? I mean, you took a slightly wrong line and then the back end slid away. Yeah, slid away, and I just went down the bank and I couldn't get it out. I must say, the, the way you tackled the rest of the course, you, you really went for it. What about that uh, over the log? You seem to have no trouble at all with that. No, it was good. I liked that one. <laughs> yeah. You liked it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you've uh, got another go in the reverse direction. I mean, does it worry you to think, you know, all right, you made a bit of a mess of that one. Does it worry you to go in again? Yeah, it does worry me a bit. Does it? Yeah. yeah. You have to get the bottle going again, do you? And steal yeah. the nerves. Yep. Yeah. Right, well, very best of luck. Thanks very much. So at the halfway point, then, Luke Wood leads, as expected, 1 minute 28.63. Gary Hall is second in 220.06. And close behind him, Andrew Johnson in 224.14. And it could well be between those three. When we reverse the course, they go in the opposite direction. And we start off now with the run of Mark Schofield.
So Mark Schofield then, the first to go in this opposite direction. 13 years old from Rochdale. His time, the first time round, was 3.19.84. You're looking now at his elapsed time. That's the time added on for this round that he's now running, plus his first round time. And that will set the target for the others. But the course in this direction is harder. And there's one of the spots, but he just made it look very nicely. They've got to keep the rear tire on the ground, drive up through there. Marshall watching the stop box there. Very clearly you can see how that was supposed to operate, and he did it perfectly. And now they do the under and over. And he oh. does it nicely. This actually is very lucky there. You've got to get that rear end to jump up and level out, and that'll give you your height. But he, he still made it, and it's done very well. This is a good, brave route. Clean so far. He only had two faults, actually, the first time uh, through. Right, this is one of the harder parts in the course here. They've got to come down here, make a left-hand turn, and up the waterfall. If he's, up. he's done it. That's excellent. Plate. This is very fast, and he's clear so far. Wet wheels on Zebedee, no problem. This is a clear round. Brilliant. 4.42.46 is his total time. He can be very proud of that. This is Dan Hemingway, then, to tackle that target, which has been set by Mark Schofield. Dan was 19 seconds quicker than Schofield on the first round, which means that's just one penalty, that's all. So uh, he's going to have to be accurate. He had three faults on the first round, but rode over the ground very quickly. 13 years old, from East Keswick, near Leeds in Yorkshire. Oh, he held on. Very nice. You see the rear tire jumped in the air, and when it hit again, he really had to hold himself real tight on the bike and just keep those feet out. And that's how to ride the stop box. Very good. We've seen a lot of senior riders fail to ride those stop boxes that well. Now, the small bike, can he leap it out, or is it going to be a penalty? He's good done it. Job. You could hear the engine got very, really revved up, and what he did is he actually dropped the clutch. Oh, and he's gone the wrong way here. Went the wrong way, but he's put it right. This is precisely what uh, Dougie Lampkin did in heat one. And he actually rode it the wrong way and then went back and put it right. So he lost no points, just time. Oh, he's having a wonderful ride here. Very quick on the ground. He failed on this first time round, but his wheels might have been a bit wet from the waterfall. That's clean. He's clean so far. It's a good time. But this is a disadvantage of the smaller bike here. When he gets three quarters of the way up, you can hear the engine speed just start to slow down. And that'll be his hard time. And the foot. Oh, now he's got a problem. Now if he can just get on the side of that bike and walk it up the hill. There's a lot of Easier grip said than done. I fall down that bike and bang and I wasn't on a bike. But, right, he should have stayed on the side of the bike. And he could have just walked it up because there's a lot of grip. Now he's got an awful problem here. Oh. I don't like the look of that, Jack. As long as he can get it running. He's wedged himself. I'm not sure that, that was a good move, was it? Well, he, he has the problem where he has to get it started now. He can't go back there. He's going to have to get off and try and right. manipulate this around. Oh, oh, dear. What a shame. And the round that had started so promisingly ended in disaster there for Dan Hemingway. Time of 6.33.18 plus that 20-second penalty makes 6.53.18. Andrew Johnson then, age 12, with every chance of getting through into the final here. Comes from Pembroke Dock. Way over there in the rugged coast of Wales. The time to beat on the left-hand top corner. Andrew's time in the right-hand corner. All right, Just very steep hill here. Let's make this duck under. He's got one kickstart title under his belt, the Pairs Championship, as we said, with the Italian Diego Bosis. And the chance of a double if he can win this one. And this jump right here has caught several people, but it's, it's all in the timing of getting the suspension down right and letting off the power so the rear will come in here. Very nice. 
see the way that rear tire jumped in the air, and that's all in timing. Getting the suspension right and letting off the power right. So Fantic 243. And he's riding. Oh, what a oh, shame. He made the mistake on those the first time round as well. Well, all it takes is just not being quite straight or giving the power just a little bit off, and the foot goes down. So a 20-second penalty to add, but pretty good timing so oh, he's far. he's in trouble. And another foot down, so that's a 40-second. Well, that is very difficult right there, and I, I remember we, we went up that in the seniors, and I had a lot of trouble back then, and it's the same thing. Interesting, it is precisely the same for the courses. It's never changed. There we are, 357.74 plus 40, so he just beats the leading sign there. Makes 437.74. In second place then, after the first run, Gary Hall, 13 years old, from County Durham, from Shildon, goes to Sunnydale Comprehensive. The snooker fan. Some reds, whites and blues there. But the point here, though, is all you have to do is get the front end up just high enough to clear the bottom of the engine and let it down. Now, he was very fast over the ground, but picked up three rather careless penalties on the first round. And Jack, you do maintain this course is harder this way around. It certainly is this. I mean, it's, it's hard both directions, but this way there's three or four items that are especially hard that can really lose points. But in whichever direction this is the same. Oh, Actually, it isn't nice. quite. It's harder to get onto the log the way they have to do it this way, isn't it? Right, they have to come right up to the fence. And he almost went the wrong way. But he comes right up to the fence. But it's, it's harder, too, because they're not quite straight on the log. And no real run in it, but very easy. Fearsome drop underneath that. It really uh, is a very frightening obstacle. And this one's just awkward, and he rides it well. And down here at the bottom of the hill, you have to be just right over the top of the bike, turn on enough power to start, and keep the rear wheel on the ground. I must say, you can afford out. a penalty, but he's not got one. So if you can hold it together, we're going to get a clear round from Gary Hall. Whoa! He yeah, flags up. So he lost there. He's got 20 against him, but that still leaves him in a winning position, or certainly the lead at the moment, at 408.48. I'll be very surprised if Luke Wood here, the 14-year-old from Draycott in Derbyshire, doesn't win this heat. He really is a superb rider well ahead after the first first uh, part of the course first half of the competition and now just needs to hold it together to go through but i think what he needs to work on is just being consistent and smooth and not wasting on i mean and just getting too wild i mean that's how he could lose the the overall i find it quite interesting jack that probably the first time we saw luke wood he was about the size of young ricky bromley oh he certainly was i mean and he really has grown up He's got a lot of strength, and he moves the bike well underneath him. It's quite interesting that the, the, the most consistent and perhaps the best riders don't say, I like all sports and so on. They like related sports like BMX riding, and they enjoy maintaining their bikes. They don't get sidetracked. And Luke Wood's one of those. Clean so far. This is a terrific ride. Yeah, well, he's, he's not quite as anxious this time, and that's what he had to do, is, is feel relaxed on the course. Oh, good job. And he's doing a good job, just keep relaxed. And nope. The flag's up, he's got 20, so he didn't clean the course, but with 3.02.10 as his final time, oh, that really is terrific. He wins the heat. Confirmation of the results for Norwich Union Junior Kickstart Heat 2 then. Luke Wood the winner, 3.02.1. A terrific time there. And in second place, Gary Hall with 4 minutes, 08.48. Well, perhaps the position that I'm standing in here gives you some idea of just how difficult the course is to ride. Trying to avoid this wet area down here, those two youngsters came an absolute cropper. Their bikes sliding down there. But Luke Wood and Gary Hall, they proved that it was all possible they're through into the final. We have two more finalists to find. They'll be in heat three of Junior Kickstart. Join us then. Junior Kickstart. The setting still magnificent. The weather still quite glorious. But this section of the course still very, very difficult. Two youngsters got caught by it during heat two. The bike sliding down the bank into this area here. The water in front of me very deep. 
We were fishing out two feet pike out of here the other day, so it really is quite an adventurous area to get lost in. Let's hope no one gets caught in it today as we get over to the start for the riders for Heat 3. Remember, we're looking for two finalists to go through to the grand final. Here's a full list then of the riders for Heat 3. David Page, who's 14, from Midlothian in Scotland. Ian Needham, who's 13, from Nottinghamshire. Lee Sargent, who's 10, from Gwent. Russell Lee Brass, who's 12, from Lancashire. Andy Huddleston, who's 11, from County Durham. And John Bradshaw, who's 12, from Surrey. This is the 14-year-old David Page. He comes from Newbridge in Midlothian, Edinburgh. Riding a Fantic 75. Small lad, small bike. He's been riding since he was three. Now we're looking for two riders to go through to the final, as I said. They'll be the fastest over two rides on this course, one in each direction. 20 second penalties for feet down, failing to get through the obstacles clean. It's the only penalty. The rules are very simple in kickstart. You either get it right or you don't. If you don't, you get a 20 second penalty. With me in the commentary box, as usual, the former North American Trials champion Jack Stites from Florida. Yes, hello, Peter. Well, he's, he's doing a tremendous job so far. And a few of these spots, I mean, every one of these sections, I mean, can get you. You can either fall off, put down your feet, or just literally just dump you right off. This is an interesting one, a stop box. You heard the whistle, that meant he cleaned it. Well, as long as he didn't fall off straight after, it meant he'd stopped at least. Now he's got a nasty bank to go down and limbo under. Remember, this course has to be tackled in the opposite direction as well. A new obstacle for this series. Three of these pyramids have to be tackled. Right three in, out of the four, any three. Right, and the hard part here is they have to keep the front end high right when it clears, and if it doesn't, the bottom of the engine hits. Well, that's a great target to be set for everyone. 127.27 clear. He'll be very proud of that. Ian Needham is 13. He comes from Long Eaton in Nottinghamshire. He's riding a Yamaha 250 and was fourth in the Pro-Am kickstart, partnering John Lampkin. All right, once again, this is very steep coming down. And the problem is when they get to the bottom, they have to make a right-hand turn and the tires bring water in there. It makes it very slippery. I'll tell you, Jack, when I was down there, it's very difficult to find oh. a foothold, let alone ride it. And he's got problems now because if it drops down that bank, he won't get it back. Right, what the problem is, when it does get slippery, you've got to be very smooth on the throttle. And if you're not, it'll start to spin, and you're on just a little bit of a ledge there. And if you give it too much power, it'll slide out. And that's what's happened. The strain and effort of hanging on to that there. He doesn't want to let it go, because that bank is very nasty. But he's on. see how he's on the upper side of the bike? If he was on the lower side, he wouldn't have a chance. But now he has leverage to get it up, hopefully. But he's going back down. He's going to have to have assistance, which technically, of course, will disqualify him. Shame. But he's not going to get out of there. The time zooming away, the more he struggles, the more tired he'll get. And I'm afraid that that's probably the end of Ian Needham's ride. It's another 10-year-old, Lee Sargent. Comes from our second, I think it's called, in Gwent, in South Wales. Riding a Fantic 75. Now, what's he going to be feeling like, Jack? He's just seen the lad before him, older, more skillful, more experienced, coming an absolute cropper. Well, you know, he, he most likely would have run down there and taken another look at it. He knows it's going to be a problem, and what he may do is he may put down a foot before he gets to it. Oh, he's in oh. trouble. Now, the, th the two youngsters in Heat 2 were about the same size as young Lee, and this is where they went. It's where I was standing at the start of this program. It's terrible down there. It's very hard to find a footing, and he's got to try and wrestle a bike out. I think we might have seen the end of young Lee for this particular one here, shaking his head. If they are helped, of course, they are technically disqualified. Now, what he can do, if he can get the bike going in the right-hand direction as we look at it, he can go up the waterfall. As long as he goes around the top and then puts his wheels through the exit, he would be technically still in the competition. Right, well, he, he has his bike now pointing in the right direction, and he should be able to ride out, and so he may be okay. It is very wet down there. The water that the waterfall has brought down has made a very nasty, muddy bit. And I just wonder that these youngsters get put off by that, try to avoid it, and get into the problems. Well, that's right. I mean, you see something that is wrong, and then you try even harder not to get into it. 
But once and again, this is a smaller machine, and this is a steep hill. Well, he's had his penalty, so he can't get any more, and he's ridden that beautifully. Oh, wonderful. Right, so now, as long as he gets through the exit gate, he will still be in the competition. There he goes through the gate, so he's in. That's okay. He's cost him a lot of time, but he's still running. That's good. Well, he must just get himself together. Oh, wonderful. Just keep right over the bike and use your head. I mean, don't let your heart just keep pounding so much that you forget what you're doing. Possibly a power thing there, though, with the bike. Uh, small bike to get over that pole. And he's got 40 against him, but he's still riding. And he's brave, too. 10-foot drop under there, that's brilliant. I interviewed him before heat one, and uh, he said he was very nervous. He wasn't all that confident, but I must say he's riding pretty well. Well, he certainly is. I mean, especially that stop box, you, you really, it's so hard to stop and just get everything together. And something seems to be the problem. I'm told there's 60 seconds against him, not 40. There's three penalties, so I've missed seeing one. But it's a huge time anyway. We'll be adding a minute to that. Makes 401.32. This is 12-year-old Russell Lee Brass from Clitheroe in Lancashire. His brother, Stuart Brass, was in heat one, just failed with a, a, a careless mistake, I suppose one must say, to make the final. Can Russell do any better? He was actually sixth in the Pro-Am kickstart, partnering Tony Scarlett. All right, he's going to be very careful here. Oh, he's put, a, he's put his foot down. But he's... Oh, he's turning right around to go back up. Well, he, he lost his foot early there, so... It will be debated. Uh, he's got to get back on course. He really made a mess of that bus. I mean, it almost looks as though he gave it up. And turned straight around and came out to get the shorter route. Seems a silly thing to have done if he did it on purpose, because uh, the ride out on the proper route is actually easier than the waterfall. Well, it certainly is, especially after he had his foot down already. Um, it would have been quicker to go straight on. We're told by the judges that that was acceptable because he failed, made a mistake at the bottom, took the shortest route out, went through the exit, as he's supposed to do, and so it is still legitimate. But he's got 20 seconds to add to this, which certainly won't put him in the lead, but uh, he could be competitive. This fellow, he, he has a very nice stance on the bike. He'll just keep him right over the center. Right now so he at must the moment pick. he's just got the one penalty. Right, he, he can pick any three he wants here. Very nice. Just keep the front end just a little high. And through very fast. 131.87 plus 20 makes 151.87. This is Andy Huddleston. He's just 11. Comes from Frostily near Bishop Auckland in County Durham, riding a Majesty 100. Bike that used to be very popular with the youngsters. It's the only one in the competition this year. So let's see how he does down here. It's in all of this. It's always just keeping the right line, keeping himself centered, and a smooth throttle, and, and made that's oh, how simple beautiful. it can be. Just drive right through. Wonderful job. Clean and neat. Oh, what a shame. Because he, he needed to keep a little more speed up there, and, and he lost his balance and slowed down. Never got the lift there. Right, well, what Runs the, from the crowd. Right, what, he, he really needs to shut off the power around there, and that's what lifts the rear end, is that weight transfer of dropping the front, making the rear lift. They're probably on the top there. Through and away, 40 seconds to add to this time. One more to go on this direction after Andy. Then they all have to turn around and go around the course in the opposite direction, which is harder. My friend Jack Stites tells me. Yeah, it certainly is harder. And this, this course here, you need to be just strong and consistent and keep a good score. Because the way around, there's a lot of things that can stop you. 
round the top and then straight through. They're taking the same route, all the ones in this heat. And he's through there. It's a good time, 134.21, but he has got 40 to add, which makes 214.21. This lad's been riding for seven years. Hardly looks old enough to have ridden for that long. John Bradshaw, he's 12. He comes from Chert, near Farnham in Surrey. He's on a 100cc Honda. Fred, he, he is one of the smallest riders again riding in actual physical size. And so we keep our fingers crossed that he doesn't make the mistake at the bottom. Oh dear, this oh, is the just point. Just as long as they don't go too far in. If he backs the bike up now, he'd be in good shape. And get a straight run. It's very slippery here, but he's on the right side of the bike. He's so little, this lad. Oh, dear, it is so hard. There's nothing you can do, just watch it oh. slide away. It's gone. Now he's in real trouble. And we've seen it before. He's got to turn this bike around and get out up the waterfall. Right. There's if he can no the, other way. If you can get the bike turned around, he's in good shape. And that's, that's the big problem here for him. See the effort and determination. But you see, his bike is still running. And that gives him a good chance. So it's just not all physical strength. Yeah, he's, up, he's on. The act oh dear, this is difficult for him. Right, but what he should do here is he should, as long as he has installed the motor, it looks like it has now. And back in 1985, he won the D class. That's under the age of 10 for this championship. He's got plenty of pedigree and he's got plenty of time. But this will frustrate him immensely. Time ticking away. Not a good round for these youngsters. The small ones have really suffered on this bank. Almost all in exactly the same place. So a really tough round there. John Bradshaw had to be helped. So he was eliminated, as had been Ian Needham earlier. And that leaves us with David Page in first place, Russell Brass in second, Andy Huddleston third, and Lee Sargent in fourth place at the halfway stage. We now reverse the course. Lee Sargent will be the first to go. The smallest lad left in the competition, Lee Sargent, the 10-year-old, comes from Aversicken in Gwent. Probably get letters telling me I've pronounced that all wrong. I think Gwent was right. He's got quite a lot to do, but he'll feel pretty proud to have got this fight. It's a great achievement to just get into this competition, let alone to do any good in it. And uh, Lee, small and brave. And this is where he's going to have a problem, I should think, Jack. Right, like he has a smaller board bike. Ooh. And so he really needed to get a lot of speed early because they have to run at a high speed. And especially with that two logs that are right there they've had to be very smooth and let off the power and actually let the rear tire roll over the first one so they can get grip in between now, whatever his problem was he sorted it out looking over his shoulder and now onto the stop box oh unlucky and in fact, the round continued to not be too happy for young Lee. He did ride it very well, but it's a tough course for these very little lads. And he ended up with a total time of 9.34.56. Andy Huddleston then, who's 11, began riding when he was six years old. He was from Frostily, up there in the northeast near Bishop Auckland, County Durham. The time he's got to beat, well, that really is academic. He shouldn't have any problem with that. But I suppose there are only three riders really in this anyway. Andy Huddleston, and we have Russell Brass and David Page. They're the ones who it is all between. So it's very much up to Andy Huddleston to put up a good time. And I was going to say faultless, but he's made a bad mistake there. Right, he certainly did. He didn't quite have enough speed to, to get right. What he did, he should have had just a little bit more speed, and when the rear tire hit that log right there, he needed just to roll off the power to let it roll up over it. He didn't have enough speed, and he didn't let off the power. But he's made it through, and he's still on. You know, there's a great atmosphere here. The crowd really give them every encouragement. None of the youngsters feel they've failed, even if they don't do a particularly good performance. It's a tough game, this. But it's one thing that... One minute you're on and everything's so simple and you're riding through and, and anything at any time can just stop you if it's just not absolutely perfect. But that, I, I personally think that's one of the reasons why it's so good, good for younger kids is that it really...